there for the vaccine. And there are five millions of testing kits that will enable us to get that done the day. Right, so we're going to put all this together. I'm having to use my big wok because I left my big pan at a place that I work, but this is okay, this is plenty big enough. So I've got a nice heat on. I've got my olive oil. I'm going to put two or three tablespoons of olive oil in there. Okay. Can use vegetable oil. <coughs> I wouldn't recommend it, um, I know people who do, or if you've got a non-stick pan, you can do it with no oil at all, but then you get a little bit of an issue with the onions and things like that sticking, because you need quite a high heat. So, I'm going to wait for this to heat up, it won't take long, It'll take about 30 seconds. Got my wooden spoon, I don't want to scratch my pan, metal on metal is a bad thing. I'm going to put in here my onions and chorizo. Okay. I'm going to get these to a nice heat. Sweat the onions off. This takes around about two or three minutes. Okay. Now, I'll try and show you best I can if I can pick my phone up without knocking it off. The, the chorizo will turn the onions almost a, a red and the release of the paprika and they're already doing it now um, I can't really show you at the moment but you'll see when the if you use chorizo once it hits that heat it releases all its flavors and believe me it's amazing so while they're nearly sweated off now I'm going to add my carrots I'm not actually going to put all that carrot in because it was a bit too much that was um, I need I needed a smaller carrot, it was, the one I picked up was a bit too big. But this will melt into the spag bol. You won't see bits of carrot. You won't even know it's there. You are supposed to use grated carrot and grated celery. Um, a lot of recipes, authentic Italian recipes for, a, for a, this, this kind of meal um, has grated carrot and grated celery. Couldn't find any celery in the shop not an issue. I don't like celery but it's actually very nice in this. Um, I have got some celery salt somewhere but I'm not going to bother. So I'm going to let that sweat away. Okay that's been in there for what about 40 seconds, 50 seconds. Keep it mixing. You don't want to burn the onions, you just what's called sweating the onions off. Okay, so, I don't know if you can see that, but the onions have changed colour almost. Where's the, where's the thing gone? I don't know if you can see that, they've changed colour, they've gone, they've gone like an orangey red colour. Now for my pork, okay? Put the pork in. Now we're going to slightly brown this pork. We're going to seal it. In with the onions, the carrots, and the chorizo. Okay? You need to let that cook. Don't be scared of having the heat on high. And while that's doing that, I'm going to open my passata. So open my passata. Tossing around. You don't want to mess with it too much at this point because you want the pork to seal. Okay, so let's get that out of the way so you can see. These are my bowls that I've used. So I want this, I want the pork to go white, I want it to seal. Don't pause the video for a minute because this takes three or four minutes to do and then we'll come back to it. Okay, so my pork is now sealed. Okay, it's gone white. I can't really lift the camera up because in case I knock it off. So at this point now, that has now been in there for about four or five minutes. 
Okay, the onions are not brown, they're just sweaty. That's the idea of keeping them moving around. If you leave them in there, they will go brown and you don't want that. Okay, this is not an Indian curry, this is a spaghetti bolognese. So now I'm going to tip in my passata. The whole tub it. And then, well, keep, the, keep the container, fill it with cold water. Give it a little swirl around. Tip it in with it. I'm going to mix up. Now you're going to think, oh my god, that looks like a soup. Trust me. Just trust me. At this point now, only at this point, because you don't want to put the garlic in too early, because I've got like a bitter taste. So I'm now going to put my garlic in, okay? I'm also going to put my mushrooms in. Okay, so the garlic and the mushrooms are now in. Beautiful. Now, I'm going to put in around about half of one of these tubes of tomato puree. I'd already got one that was open here with a little bit in it. There's probably about a quarter of a, of a tube in. So I'm going to put that in, roll it around. The only way to get it all out is to roll it around like that. Squash it, tip the end over, so you end up with a tube that looks like that. Okay, and you, you, you're practically, it's practically empty then. So I'm going to put about another third of this in. Roll it around, squash it. I'd say that was enough. Put it back on, stick them in the fridge. Fantabulous. I'll give them a good mix up. Okay. You don't really need to be putting any seasoning in at this point. This is now going to reduce down to a beautiful thick sauce. And if you want to add more water, in a lot of parts of Italy, they, they will make this over a, a 24 hour to 48 hour period. They'll make this a, a two days in advance and they'll have it in a big pan and they'll fill it up with water and they'll reduce it down and they'll fill it up with water and they'll reduce it down. And in the end, you get this most amazing flavor. We're not looking to do that because we obviously we haven't got time for that. Um, that is now, you want to bring this to the boil, okay, the pork at this point is still raw, but it's sealed. So don't panic about that, it will release all its flavours into sauce. Once this is on a boil, I'm going to put it on the back heat on a, on a simmer, because as it thickens, it will start splashing everywhere. I don't want it on this big wok burner that I've got at the front. I want it on the back on a low heat. There was actually one thing that I forgot to put in here. And it's probably a good thing because the missus doesn't like it. When you've sweat the onions off, put your oregano in to release the flavours. I forgot about it. There's no point putting it in now because it'll go all grainy. But never mind. I forgot it was there. So as you've done the onions, when you've got the onions, the chorizo and the pork and you've got a dry pan, Put your oregano in with that and that'll release the flavours and like a divvy I forgot. So I can only apologise. Some chef I am. But never mind, hey ho, life goes on. So this is now coming to a boil. Okay, got some nice bubbles on top of there. I'm going to pick the camera up now to show you what this looks like. Don't, please don't knock it off. Okay, so, oh, if I can get it right, it looks like, I can't do this, what's going on here? It looks like that, I got it eventually. Right, so we've got a boil, so I can't turn the bloody camera around. So we've got a nice boil now, and I've got the back heat on. So, put him back there a second. So now that you've seen that, don't tell me that doesn't look delicious and rich. I'm now going to turn this heat off and I'm going to put it on the back one while it's still bubbling. The back one's on a very low simmer. That will take a 
approximately an hour. So if you're having this for your tea, get this done, get it prepped up early on. If you, to, be, to be fair, this stuff will taste better with the meatballs in it and everything the day after. And all you've got to do is just put it on a low heat the next day and, and just heat it through um, in the wok or pan or whatever you're using. Don't have it on too high because obviously now it will be a thick sauce and it will, well, it will stick, it will burn. So if you need to put a little bit more liquid in it, that's fine. Um, if not, just heat it gently. You can microwave it. I wouldn't advise it. It's not something I would do personally. Um, but just leave the pan on. Put a, put a lid on it if you want to. And just leave it on a very gentle simmer. Stir it every now and again. And just make sure it's not catching on the bottom. So this, I'm going to come back to this in about an hour and it will be perfect and i'm going to put the meatballs in now so i'll just show you that quickly uh, i've got my oven i don't need to show you i've got my oven on 180 i've got my meatballs voila oh I've just turned the gas on I've, just done. I've got my meatballs and they're going to go in the oven now because i want them to rest they're going to go in the oven for around about 20 to 25 minutes i'm going to keep an eye on them make sure they're browned um, once they're I'm going to take them out I'm going to, half an hour before this is finished I'm going to put them in there with all the juices you want all that flavour in there you don't want to be throwing that away get it all in there it's only from the mince and, and you know, the, oh, it's only from the mince so don't, don't worry about it you will get a bit of residue <coughs> get it in there, it's beautiful so we'll come back to that shortly right these were in the oven. I don't know if you can see these properly. They look amazing. Um, these were in for just over 20 minutes, 21 minutes, I think, they were in there for on 180. Now, they're going to rest on there or whatever. I'll move them over the other side on the chopping board. And then I'm going to put them in. The spaghetti bolognese has been on for around about sort of half an hour ish. So in about another half hour, I'm going to put them in the sauce and I'm going to leave them for half an hour in the sauce, just bubbling away. And they will take on the flavour and they will be amazing. So we'll come back to that. The, the sauce just looks beautiful at the moment. It's taking on a nice thickness. What I'm going to do at this point now, when you're cooking something with a lot of tomato, You need, because tomato is quite bitter. Tomato is quite bitter. So I need around about one teaspoon of sugar. Sometimes I put a little bit too much in and I get told about it all the time. Don't I, Rosemary? But one teaspoon is ample. I'm also going to put a little bit of seasoning in. So I'm going to put a bit of pepper. I'm going to put a little bit of salt. I'm just going to use table salt for this. Around about a teaspoon in there. We don't want too much, we don't want to overpower it. The sugar, all it will do is counteract the bitterness of the tomato. This is looking absolutely amazing. It's on a nice low simmer, been on for around about half an hour. Guarantee the pork starting to nicely soften up. It won't break up because you sealed it. Well, I hope you sealed it. You better have sealed it. And we'll have a little taste. Oh my God, that's amazing. That is amazing. One teaspoon of sugar. <laughs> Just normal granulated sugar. A little bit of salt and pepper at this point. Give it a good stir. Have a taste. Believe me, it makes all the difference. That is amazing now. That is absolutely beautiful. In about 20 minutes, half an hour, I'm going to put the meatballs in there and they're going to leave for another half hour. And it will be the most amazing spag bowl, I promise you, that you've ever tasted in your life. So uh, we'll come back to that in a sec. 
Right, I've put the meatballs in. It's a time lapse. It was half an hour after I told you. If you add anything to any liquid, it drops the temperature. So I've had to now put this back on a on a boil. I'm going to bring it back up to the boil. And then I'm going to turn it back down to a simmer for around half an hour. I wish you could see this. I wish you could smell this. It is absolutely unbelievable. I will turn the camera around when I suss it out, how to do that. But these meatballs will feel quite firm when you put them in there now. But then once you leave them in there for half an hour, just simmering away in the juices, in the sauce, they will soften up to perfection. And they will take on the flavours. Kids are going to love this. Believe me. Get them making the meatballs. Get them helping in any which way they can. Make a cheese sauce for it. Like I, I love a cheese sauce on top of this. Like I showed you the cheese sauce video um, yesterday. If you, if you make a cheese sauce, pour it over the top. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely unbelievable. Don't need lots of it. Just enough. So they're going to stay in there now for half an hour. And then it's going to be the most amazing spag bol. Well, it's not going to be the amazing, most amazing spag bol I've ever tasted because I make this all the time. But it's going to be the most amazing spag bol you've ever tasted if you do this properly. It's a lot cheaper. And it's a little more work. But it's a lot cheaper than going out and buying the crap you buy in the tubs. You know, two quid for a jar of Dolmio. Make it yourself. That, that passata was 35p. The garlic was 30, 30 odd pence. Um, the onions were, were 60 odd pence, all from home bargains. And I got all that, and it's, you know, the carrot, what, 2p for a carrot. You do that and you cook it properly. Believe me, the flavours in this time now of everybody's need, when you can't run out to the shops because we've just had a lockdown, I believe, was it, Rose? Three weeks? Three weeks we've had a lockdown. So now you can't go to shops, so start going out, stop being bone idle. You're teaching your kids nothing by tipping Dolmio into a pan. Teach them how to do this, it will be life skills. They don't do econ uh, home economics like we used to do in school when I was a kid. I'm 52 years of age and I loved it. And I learned from my cousin, Mark Whittle, great chef, loved the guy. I learned from my, I learned from my uh, granddad who was a master chef. I've never, ever, ever had tins of anything other than beans and tomato and things like that i always make everything from scratch and somebody asked my message in work today why aren't you fat well one of the reasons for that is because i don't use fatty things we have a lot of i know i've got a belly but that's from working as a chef all my life and going home and having a 12 inch pizza at 11 o'clock at night it's nothing to do I, I have a lot of herbs and garlic i have a lot of I very, very rarely get a cold. I can't remember the last time I had a cold. I've probably had a cold three times in the last 10 years. I just don't get colds. And it's all down, I think, to eating fresh, using fresh ingredients. Um, it is the way to go. And I think once you taste this spag bol, let me just see if I can lift the camera up without my ugly head going on there. And have a butcher's, I'm trying to sort this out. I'm trying to do it upside down. Have a look at that. That is going to be on for half an hour. And that just looks absolutely amazing. And believe me, the meatballs will take on a fantastic, fantastic flavour. There it is, that's a better picture. Can't suss this out when you're trying to work it out when it's upside down, you can't turn your camera around. But look at that. That's going to stay on for half an hour. Get it served, get some spag bol, and it takes 10 minutes. That fresh pasta takes five minutes. Um, bit of grated cheese on top, beautiful. I hope you enjoy this, guys. Good luck, let me know how you get on.